Uh, so this is sort of like the first moment, the, so sort of like the weighted mean, this is sort of like the variance, right? So, so once we have defined mt and vt, uh, this is proportional to the weighted history of the gradient. Uh, uh, this is proportional to the weighted history of the square of the gradients, right? Then um, we further, uh, based on whatever MD we calculated, we further adjusted by the value of the beta 1 a little bit, uh, similarly for the VT. And then take a look at our final expression in Adam. It's very simple. It is uh, each time we update the parameter, it's the current value minus the learning rate divided by square root of the Vt. Again, some epsilon over here so that the denominator doesn't go to zero. Multiply it by mt. Supposedly, this works really well for, I'll say, 70% of the problems. So everybody tries Adam as the learning rate optimizer or the learning rate scheduler. And it's very easy to implement, like I said, from a computation point of view. Okay, what do you have to do if you were to program it yourself? Let's think about it. Each time you compute the gradient, remember beta 1, beta 2 are fixed. You will pick them in the beginning, like 0 0.9, 0 0.98, whatever, right? Uh, so each time you compute the gradient, can you compute MT based on the current value of the gradient? Yes. Can you complete compute VT based on the current value of the gradient? All you're doing is squaring it. Yes. Right? So then what will be your current learning rate? Current learning rate. So again, MT, VT can be easily calculated your current learning rate will be this much. With, since we know Vt hat, which is this, uh, we can easily update the parameter. Now as we go to the next iteration, we now, so suppose we computed Gt1, now we have to, the next gradient suppose is Gt2. So now let's go back over here. So take a look over here. Okay, so, and again, let's pretend the old MT, uh, first time we computed, let's pretend was 0 0.23. The old VT that we computed last time, suppose, was 0.11. Okay, so take a look. Now, we already are here, so we compute the new gradient. So new gradient, suppose, is 0.07. Beta 1 is a number, right? And what will happen to mt minus 1 now? In this example, it will become the old value, 0.23. So we multiply the old mt by beta 1, which is typically 0.9. So we are discounting it. Uh, that becomes the new mt. That becomes a new mt. So my question is, each time as we compute a new gradient, aren't we updating MT, aren't we updating VT? So from a programming point of view, do we have to maintain all the previous history of the gradient? No, because each time we just update this variable. Compare this to where we were getting confused. So compare this to the GT where we were using this one over here. The capital GT, if you recall, was the history of all the previous gradients, right? So to program it, once you need to store it in some big array or big list. Okay, so that's why for theoretical interest, it's hot. I mean, uh, we want to know how it works, but nobody uses it these days. So even if we didn't clarify 
<laughs> no big deal, but we, but we will. Okay. Um, so, uh, one more minute and I'll stop. I just want to make sure you guys understand the most important learning rate algorithm, which is the atom. Okay. And what is the fundamental idea in the atom? Take a past history of the gradient and discount it by beta 1. So each time it gets reduced by 0.9, whatever the old uh, gradient was, as you can see, right? Whatever the current gradient is, it only contributes 0.1. This is the current gradient, right? Okay, so anyway, um, similarly we do it to the square of the gradient. Based on the past history of MT, past, and again, discounted history, discounted history, we don't, all we can do is, uh, we are making, we, we are storing a running, sort of like a running discounted average, running square of the average over here, sort of, right? Uh, and based on that, we will adjust the learning rate. So very, very easy to program, okay? and highly, highly effective. So you guys will see in the next assignment yourself, okay? And last comment before I stop. I have updated the website, so let me quickly show you what is there. Okay, so first of all, I just put in assignment number four. Very easy, I gave you all the code all the instruction. So here we were, so this is what I had demonstrated to you, the comparison between logistic regression and neural network, right? So all the code is here. If you are missing any package, how you will put it in case you're using Visual Studio, how will you do it? My suggestion is, because all the code is there, try not to copy and paste, because then your brain won't pick up, uh, right? The uh, reason I'm providing you all the code in the beginning is so that gradually you learn from my examples and get better at coding. Uh, pretty soon as we go to more advanced things where you will be coming up with a loss function of your own and programming it yourself, then I won't be giving you as, as much detail. So very, very important, go through each and every part, how it was organized, uh, how it's working. So. So all the code that I demonstrated to you, I have tried to put explanations, you know, just like when we ran it with hidden size of three, what the decision boundary was, how the decision boundary was plotted. So, so this assignment is easy, you just have to go through the code, right? Uh, very quickly, one more thing. One was uh, reading from an Excel, one was um, randomly generated. So I've given you the Excel file, which I had forgotten before. So you can take the Excel. Okay. Uh, for assignment three, if you program on your own laptop, if you use the full data set, it will be taking too long. So I've given you a, a compressed data set. Uh, for assignment number three, and so if you use un unzip it, use this point to this one would be easier. And the softmax derivation and uh, rest is easy. I didn't get to cover batch normalization, so wait on it and until I cover it in the next lecture. Okay. So keep trying to catch up to the assignments. If you run into any error, feel free to stop by my office. <laughs>